In this video, we will explore mineral restrictions in the diet for kidney disease. We will discuss sodium, potassium, and phosphorus in relationship to kidney disease. When we think of sodium, the first food that normally comes to mind is salt. Truly, this is a high source of sodium, and it is important to limit salt not only at the table, but in food preparation as well. But over the last several decades, another source of sodium has emerged as the leading source in American diets. Foods that are processed to extend shelf life have become the leading source of sodium. Salt is a great preservative that has been used since before refrigeration to extend shelf life of foods. So nowadays, foods that are boxed, bagged, and canned that require little to no preparation are often some of the highest sodium sources. In an age of the fast-paced lifestyle where convenience is a priority, the amount of sodium has skyrocketed. Certainly not all processing techniques increase sodium, such as many of the canned fruits and even frozen plain vegetables. However, for the most part, our processed foods are quite high. And let's not forget our favorite restaurant foods that supply a very large sum of sodium to the American diets. While instructing a client with kidney failure, it is very important to help them understand the benefits of decreasing sodium in their diets. Since the kidneys are responsible for removing the excess amount of nutrients, lowering the intake of sodium will put less work on the kidneys. We also know that sodium plays a large role in high blood pressure. Reducing sodium intake can help maintain blood pressure in an acceptable range. Blood pressure is largely controlled by the kidneys, so by keeping blood pressure in a normal range, it can also help keep the kidneys from working overtime. And as the kidneys fail and urine output declines, the client may be placed on a fluid restriction. Controlling thirst will be very important. Since high sodium intake increases thirst sensation, a sodium restriction can help control that thirst. The best way to limit or reduce sodium intake is to prepare foods from scratch using plenty of salt-free seasonings. This can become a very difficult task as the kid kidney disease progresses and symptoms become worse. Clients may lack energy and not feel well enough to cook for themselves. As healthcare professionals, one of the most important questions we can ask a client with chronic kidney disease is about his or her family or social support. Having someone who can assist with grocery shopping and food preparation could make a lot of difference in the health of these clients. Keep canned fruits and frozen vegetables on hand. If on a potassium restriction, the client can drain the fluid from the canned fruit to help lower potassium content. Choose condiments with less, less than 140 milligrams per serving. Look at the labels of any reduced sodium food seasonings or condiments to make sure they didn't add potassium. Often potassium is used to replace sodium. And if on a potassium restriction, that could present some problems. Okay, let's switch gears now to the mineral potassium. Some people with kidney disease need to limit their potassium intakes. The kidneys are responsible for excreting extra potassium. So as the kidney disease progresses, potassium may become too high in the bloodstream, which can lead to severe complications, especially with the heart. When this happens, potassium intake is restricted to 2,000 milligrams per day. Individuals who are placed on a potassium restriction are normally given a list of high potassium foods to limit as well as lists of better choices with low to moderate amounts of potassium. If foods high in potassium are consumed, they must be complemented with low potassium choices the rest of the day, which allows some freedom to eat variety of foods. However, most of the high potassium foods are generally avoided, such as salt substitutes, tomatoes, potatoes, oranges, avocados, and bananas. Some of the high potassium foods are also very high in phosphorus, making them a double threat to kidney disease. Foods like chocolate, nuts, dried beans, and dairy are quite high in both potassium and phosphorus. But there are some good choices low in potassium, such as blueberries and green beans, carrots, grape juice, non-dairy whipped toppings, sorbet, rice milk, and non-dairy creamers. Since potassium is an electrolyte on the inside of cells, some of it can be leached out of the flesh of vegetables by soaking them in large amounts of warm water. 
Various types of potatoes, carrots, beets, and winter squash can be leached to remove some of that potassium. With fruits, you can purchase canned fruit and drain the fluid which will contain some of the leached potassium. And finally, we need to mention the mineral phosphorus. Phosphorus is another mineral that must be removed from the kidneys. So as kidney disease progresses, extra phosphorus may not be removed. Levels of phosphorus can increase in the body to dangerous levels, leading to low blood calcium, softening of the bones, and calcification of the heart, arteries, and joints. Excess phosphorus is also known to cause rashes and itching of the skin. The treatment is to limit high phosphorus foods and take medication that binds up phosphorus so it cannot be absorbed. Phosphorus is abundant in all foods, but some contain high amounts that should be avoided, such as processed meats, dried beans, dairy products, whole grains, chocolate, and dark colas. There are good sub substitutions one can make, such as rice milk instead of cow's milk, cream soda instead of dark colas, fruits that are low in potassium, popsicles instead of ice cream, white bread instead of whole grain, hot cider instead of hot chocolate, and jelly beans or hard candy instead of chocolate. When a higher phosphorus containing food is consumed, phosphorus binding medication can be adjusted though. With all of these diet restrictions in a diet for kidney disease, it is really easy to get lost, confused, and frustrated. I'm sure you can see with all the diet restrictions how compliance may be a problem with kidney disease. It is important to focus on the positive aspects, what is included, what they can eat, not just the foods a client can no longer have.